It's springtime in Armenia, and the cherry blossoms have arrived around the capital city, Yerevan. And that's not all that's breaking out here. More than 120,000 Russians have come here since the war began in Ukraine, with more arriving each day. This sudden influx, however, is causing challenges for Armenians as well. Well, my fiancé and I have been looking for an apartment, and the prices have gone up more than twice, and it's almost impossible to find an apartment in Yerevan. Everywhere, the prices have gone up, like, dramatically. This former Soviet satellite state is one of the few places left where Russians can travel, and up to 40 flights arrive here from Russia every day. Many of the passengers don't plan on going home anytime soon. There are Russians all over here in downtown Yerevan, and I've been talking to many of them. It seems like most of them are young professionals, IT people, things like that, people who do their work online, and that's something that you really can't do right now in Russia because of the sanctions. Also, everybody that I've spoken to has been vehemently against this war, but there's a catch. They don't want to go on camera and talk about it. That says a lot about how much they fear their own government, because most of them still have families back in Russia. Oh, there's are like tons of Russians in here, like in cafe, they are working from here, like uh, trying to rent apartments, something like that. So a lot of Russians in Armenia right now. Everyone that I'm talking with, like they are, they saying they, they like against the war. They like wearing some Ukrainian, I don't know, shirts or something like with Ukraine flag, something like that. Eventually, we found these two young Russians willing to speak out on camera. Can you tell me why you left Russia? Yeah, because of the war and uh, the Putin dictatorship. So we decided to move, like my friends moved to Armenia and I moved to Georgia and we probably won't come back until the government overthrown, but I won't be putting my money on it. But hopefully, someday, maybe. How do you feel about the war in Ukraine? I'll ask you. Uh, that's awful uh, because uh, this is illegal war uh, and uh, now Putin makes a lot of war crimes in Ukraine. So uh, <laughs> I'm not agree with the politics of my country. And uh, it's kind of strange feeling when uh, your country goes to war, but you want that your country lose it. Uh, what's the economic state in Russia right now? Yeah, well, it's most of our friends, <laughs> most of our friends is in Moscow, yeah. and my parents also. So, the, like everyday stuff you see in the shelves, our prices are rising, mm -hmm. but it's not like catastrophic right now. So everything is like fine, uh -huh. and most of the people are like, eh, whatever, just a war, it's fine. Um. Yeah. This, uh, this is the cause of uh, the whole situation in Russia. Uh, one by one, uh, all the institutes of uh, the society, of the law, uh, okay, a little bit worse, but we can live with, uh, with this. Uh, and, en and enough, and enough, and enough, and uh, here we are. Dictatorship uh, and all of this. How Even if the war ends and like Russia loses, I don't see myself living comfortably in a country where like uh, the country leader is almost like a Hitler <laughs> and like the absolutely militaristic state of the government right now is awful. So far, Armenia has avoided taking a political stand on the war, even though most are horrified at the images coming out of Ukraine. Um, I think because um, Ukraine's government supported Azerbaijan during the war uh, in Artsakh, um, Armenians feel hurt and uh, they don't really want, they, they did not really want to support Ukraine. But after, you know, seeing what was happening in Ukraine, of course we felt bad for the people. Um, and we are trying to be supportive and we're trying to be open not only to Russians in Armenia, but also to Ukrainians. But at the same time, I think we still, uh, you know, are kind of hurt because of what they did. And because even lately, when um, the situation on the border was kind of tense, uh, Ukraine's government again was giving thumbs up to Azerbaijan on their, uh, you know, um, official Twitter. And it was it, it was painful. Of course, they deleted, deleted it late, later, but it was still bad. So explain what happened. Why has why Azerbaijan decided to choose this time to make moves? I think uh, they are using the same strategy because, um, um, Last time when they attacked the major, you know, countries, 
for example, the US, they were busy with the elections and nobody was really paying attention to what was going on here. And this time everybody's busy with um, Ukraine and Russia. So um, nobody really wants to cover that. Is Russia pulling troops out of Armenia? Uh, no, not yet. No, they actually okay. helped to uh, bring back the villages that Az Azerbaijan took but from us lately. Azerbaijan's taking advantage of the fact that they are distracted. Um, I think because um, Ukraine's government supported Azerbaijan during the war uh, in Artsakh, um, Armenians feel hurt and uh, they don't really want, they, they did not really want to support Ukraine. But after, you know, seeing what was happening in Ukraine, of course, we felt bad for the people. Um, and we are trying to be supportive and we're trying to be open not only to Russians in Armenia, but also to Ukrainians. Armenians are great with Russians. They totally understand the situation because uh, there was a war in Armenia some time ago. So they are super friendly and I like this country very much. Thousands of Ukrainian refugees have landed here as well which makes for an interesting dynamic in the coffee shops around Yerevan, where refugees from both sides rub shoulders. Still, this Armenian pastor says there's a bright side to this crisis. This is a good opportunity for the Armenian churches to reach out those Russians who visit Armenia. They are not tourists. They just came to take refuge in Armenia because they don't have enough freedom in Russia. And they are very kind and very widely open for the gospel. And you know many Russians, uh, especially pastors, they are not free to share the gospel with, with the Russians. So for us, we have enough freedom. We just need to be equipped and to be encouraged to reach out to those Russians. So what Russians. do you need from American churches? We need the American churches to pray for us and then to encourage us and then to equip us just come and, uh, you know, lead us how to make it, how to reach out those uh, Russians here inside Armenia. Some say that there are more than 50,000 Russians here uh, trying to find refuge in Armenia. They are in a desperate situation. Some of them are depressed and they don't, hope, they don't have hope to go back to Russia. So they are looking forward to stay here for a long time. So this is a good, good very good opportunity for us. From Yerevan, Armenia, I'm Chuck Holton.